Overall though, I think that, you know, it was a success. <laughs> Leaves, 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 lee, 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 leaves. Yes, guys, that is right. Today we're doing a project with the awesome things known as autumn leaves. These beauties of nature, these crispy crunchies of non edible golden green. Is it weird that they sound delicious? Not weird that you can't actually eat them. A lot of these are poisonous. So please don't try that at home. Instead, I have been inspired to create my own packet of my own packet. Packet of what? <laughs> Instead, I have been inspired to create my own dress out of autumn leaves because honestly they are just absolutely beautiful a lot of people especially in Japan cherry blossom season everyone's all over it all that pink all that princess all that gorgeous stuff have you guys ever seen a cherry blossom tree in autumn because I think that is ten times better orange and browns and gold if I could choose any season autumn would be the one even though if I had to choose any holiday Christmas would definitely be my preference please don't at me so this week well I say this week this project is definitely gonna take longer than a week we are going to make a dress out of autumn leaves and that means you know what let's just get going Let's see what we do. I'm gonna figure this out as we go along. For this dress, I decided to be smart and I used the bodice pattern that I crafted for my Gunny Sacks cream egg dress earlier this year. The only change I'm making is that I'm going to flatten out the bottom of the bodice to take away the point as my plan for this dress wouldn't work with that sharp angle. I got my old backer curtains, actually the same old backer curtains I used to make my book page dress and began cutting. I knew this bodice fit me, so no mock up here. Then I also cut out a basic circle skirt, slightly shorter than what I wanted the final piece to be. And you'll have to carry on watching to find out why. So we've got all the pieces cut out for both the top and the bottom of the bodice. I'm just gonna kind of sandwich them together and then stitch in some boning lines to help hold everything together. The other thing I'm doing is I don't really wanna do a zip. I have been a little bit put off with how my book page dress turned out and this is gonna be a hell of a lot more complicated. So what I'm gonna do is a bunch of hook and eyes in the back, but because I don't think they're gonna quite meet, I've also cut out a modesty panel type thing. The modesty panel isn't gonna have any kind of decoration on it, it is just gonna be a plain colour, which this is not the final colour of the dress but it will just mean that I can stitch hook and eyes on it where I need them and then can just do it up and hopefully that will work out for me. Overall, I think this is all going rather well and now we're just gonna pin everything together so that we can then stitch. I arranged all the pieces and began to pin everything together. One piece I had to repin three times because my brain momentarily died and I pinned the wrong sides together, then I did it the wrong way around and then at last it was on correctly. After that they got stitched and honestly I do not know what was happening to me that day but I just could not sit down and focus on any one project which was super frustrating because though I did a bunch of other stuff I hate not getting my sewing finished. After that I ironed the modesty panel and all the corset seams, pinned the two layers of the corset together and pinned up the hem of the skirt. The skirt, I'll admit, likely isn't amazing, however it is going to be covered up so I really don't care. So I honestly do not know what's been going on with me the last two days because I just can't focus on anything and I don't know, maybe my ADHD is finally getting rid of the hyperfocus that I always suffer from, which I actually quite enjoy because it means I get shit done. I've uh, started about six different projects, I've finished none of them. I really struggling to sit down to sew but I've made myself some coke no alcohol because that never really helps the situation and we're gonna see if I can just get all this stitched up tonight and then if all this can get stitched up I will be perfectly happy with myself realistically I want to stick the leaves on tomorrow but I still need to go gather the leaves which I think I'm gonna have to do really early in the morning because it strikes me that it might be really creepy seeing someone going around the forest gathering leaves so yeah that could be a thing I genuinely don't know what time at night it is now but we're going to carry on until the stress is pretty much done so that I can then just chill and do things in the morning. That's the plan. So we got stitching those boning channels and hemming the skirt and top stitching the modesty panel to keep it all in place. I then marked out and cut some more bias tapes. And after that we finally got to the fun part and no that's not washing the sink. <laughs> The hair is up and away so it doesn't get messy. I have my dye, I need to read the instructions for it, but we're gonna dye this all in the kitchen sink because I don't have any pots that I'm willing to sacrifice and I have not been able to find one in a charity shop that is a suitable size. Here's in my shopping list though. So I say let's have a read of this. Can you all ignore all the washing up I have to do? I don't wanna do it until after I've done this because, you know, and also, you know, what's normal to do at three in the morning is definitely dyeing fabric to use the next day. I know that I have issues but they're getting really bad at the moment. I started by reading the instructions and then making the fabric damp as the instructions said. However, they also said, do not use a bath or sink because it will stain. Well, this puts a bit of a damper on my plans to say the least. So we're going to try lining the sink with a plastic bag and hope that that works. Otherwise it looks like I'm losing my deposit. 
Putting a bin bag in sync seemed to work, so I got out my scales and began my witch's brew of brown dye. And I am just going to note here, this little dye pot I got from a charity shop is a tiny metal tin. The instructions specifically instructed me to pierce the lid of this tin with a knife. This is not something I would ever recommend you doing yourself. It's definitely not safe and even worse, it made me jump, twice. I tapped out the powder and gave it a stir, then added salt and stirred again until it all dissolved. Then we filled up the sink with cold water. It didn't give me any specific amount here just said enough to cover your fabric so I added in my witch's brew and gave the fabric a quick shake out before putting it all in making sure the most important pieces like the modesty panel in the binding went in first next I gave it a good stir and pressed it all down and now comes the bit I didn't plan for and the downside of doing it at three o'clock in the morning I had to leave it for an hour but stirring regularly so I set an hour long timer and 10 minute timers to make sure that I got up to stir it every 10 minutes for the next 60 once that was all done I rinsed out the fabric with tap water until it ran clear and then hung out all the pieces up to dry in my bathroom and at this point I realised it was probably a good thing I didn't do it during the day as it had to dry away from sunlight. So we have quite dark water which looks like it still has a reasonable amount of dye left and I kind of figured rather than waste it I'm actually doing a project which I could use a little bit more brown fabric for and otherwise I'll just use it for mock-ups so I may as well just wash the back of this curtain chuck it in there I think this is way too much fabric for the amount of dye but if it just turns out a light brown I'll be perfectly happy turns out really patchy also perfectly happy should I tell you guys what this is for I'm gonna try and make a Sally dress but I just need some skirt lining so there we go now I've said it I actually have to do it let's just shove this in here also carry a bag in the sink best idea ever I just realized I did not damp this fabric beforehand, which you're supposed to do. So yeah, this could be interesting results. I mean, to be fair, that's nearly absorbed all the water. So, you know, at least not wasting anything. Not that that, ooh, not that, that was particularly expensive dye, but I don't like just washing it down the drain. So for what it's worth, it is six o'clock in the morning and I know this is a mad idea, but I just feel really creepy about going to cut sheets. <laughs> So I'm just gonna sneak out really early and kind of hope that nobody notices me stealing the local foliage. I mean, I'm gonna take stuff that's already on the floor. It's not like I'm gonna be ripping them off the trees, but oh, I don't know. I'll see how many dog walkers I find, I suppose. Let's go. Okay, so these woods are one of my favorite places and there is lots of things running in the undergrowth and there's lots of green leaves and on the ground I'm seeing lots of brown. I'm gonna head a little bit deeper in because I don't want to, like I said, really meet people while I'm doing this. I have come across one dog walker already, literally, as I pulled up. But this whole place is a giant old quarry, so there's lots of bits and pieces around. And to be fair, I've never really explored it. So, um, ooh, it's a quite a nice view, to be fair. It is a good day to collect some autumn leaves. I also love how the forest provides free snacks. Mm, perfect. Just look at all these cute little tiny apples and for size, just so that you can see how big they are. That is my hand. And this is the oh, adorable little apple. I've just hit a good spot of loads of awesome leaves, but I think my favorite leaf of the day is going to be this one. Look at how pretty she is. And she's got every color in that you could want. So yes, not doing too bad so far. As the sun finished coming up, I wandered around the forest for a while, picking up the odd leaf here and there. And once I'd gathered enough, I obviously had to do the slow motion shot of throwing the leaves in the air and being so happy as they fall on my head, before picking them all back up to put in my bag, of course. Okay guys, I think we've hit the jackpot. I think I just found my second favourite leaf, all the oranges and yellows of autumn. Okay, hello, good morning. This morning we have done an experiment before I really got processing, processing things, too early for words clearly, in which we tried to stick a leaf to fabric using Mod Podge and I can tell you right now it failed spectacularly. However, one thing I have discovered is if we coat the leaves in Mod Podge and then press them under books, it does make them lay flat and it makes them strong enough that I'm pretty sure I can sew this. So we're gonna do a couple of rounds of that and while these are drying, so we're gonna have to do it in batches, I'm gonna work on my newspaper dress, which is next month's video and fingers crossed this works <laughs> once i was up and awake we began experimenting with sticking leaves to the fabric which really didn't work so instead we covered the leaves in mod podge and dried them which did work but i still couldn't sew them on okay so the leaves have just had to be flipped over because the undersides weren't drying this isn't necessarily a bad thing and they're all holding up really well and they're keeping their color so i think this is a win i'm gonna finish off my newspaper dress because I don't have enough room to really lie out loads more leaves at the moment, but once that's all cleared away and that's done, 
We will get back to working on this, I think, which I think it's gonna work. Fingers crossed. Okay, so it has been at least a week, probably longer if I'm honest, but I haven't really been keeping track since I gathered my bags of leaves and exactly what I didn't want to happen has happened because they dried out and the reason I've been procrastinating this is quite simply because I can't sew them on, I can't glue them on, which kind of defeats defeats the point of what I was trying to do. So I have come up with a backup plan, it is gonna be okay. I might have to go gather more leaves, but it's fine, we'll be fine. We're just gonna stick them down. A lot of them are quite crunchy. Hopefully the Mod Podge will soak into them and just keep them nice and flat. And we'll see how this goes. I tried covering the leaf in Mod Podge, but it quickly cracked and was no good. So I decided to experiment with making the leaves soft again. First by steaming a few of them, and second by soaking them in Mod Podge, then actually coating them in it properly for a few minutes, which also didn't work. The steaming though, when I I came to coating them in Mod Podge they weren't perfect, definitely not as good as the fresh leaves had been, but they were a hell of a lot better than the other options so it looks like I am steaming leaves for the rest of the day. Would it have been quicker for me to just go and collect more leaves? Probably. But did I? No, mostly because I'm pretty sure I might have to go collect more leaves anyway before this is over and I don't really like going out into wherever there are people. The next day I picked up all the leaves. Most were dry and could go in the blue box ready to be put onto the dress, but a few were a little tacky so I put them to one side before steaming more leaves and painting them. This honestly took forever, but by now I had a routine and with the other autumn projects in the works I smashed out as many leaves as I could before settling down to sew those. Well, my knees are disgusting and covered in glue, so that's absolutely great. I am not going to bother changing my trousers now because we have to do the other side of these leaves in a few hours. I have a feeling that I'm probably going to be working on getting these leaves done nearly every day this week, which is really annoying, but hopefully means that by the next time I have days off and it will be next weekend, I can actually spend a day just putting the leaves onto the dress. Okay, so maybe I'm being weird. But I went to the shops and it is October so they are now selling pumpkins and I brought some normal pumpkins and then I saw this. The hell is this? Apparently, according to the damn label, it is a pumpkin. I have never seen a pumpkin like this. It is way too pretty to eat but hopefully it will taste good in some roast dinner. It's so cute though. If you know what this kind of pumpkin is called, please let me know because I am feeling the need to grow them when I eventually get a garden. For the next week, every morning before work, I steamed some leaves and painted the first side. When I got home from work, I then flipped them painted the others, and if any were dry the next day, I'd then put them in the box, setting aside any that were still a bit tacky and needed extra dyeing time so that I could then do the next batch. Every day guys, for a week. Okay, so I have just flipped and painted the last lot of leaves. I have been doing this for a week now. Oh my god. <laughs> I look dead it's because I am I've literally been doing 12 hour shifts coming home spending an hour and a half to two hours doing the leaves then going to bed then getting up working and rinse and repeat essentially which is fun now that these things are done though because obviously we've had to change our plan of how we're attaching the leaves I actually need to adjust the fabric base as it were but hopefully these will all be dry by the end of the day we have already got a full box which I'm very very pleased about they all came out really well there's the little leaves a lot of them just didn't work but all these kind of larger ones were absolutely perfect I'm hoping that I have enough I really don't want to go collect more if I have to I have to also after a week of steaming leaves this is what my steam pot looks like I need to clean this because I would like some goiser for dinner tonight and I have no other way to steam it so with that being the plan I think it's time for me to get dressed because it is like lunchtime but I have not gotten out my pajamas because glue is messy <laughs> we'll see what we can do later that day I pinned the skirt and bodice together then took them to the sewing machine to stitch and overlock the seams I then inserted the boning rounding the ends with scissors as I went this was so fiddly and yes I'm using using plastic boning because for some reason I have like an insane amount of it and I'm trying to use it all up. Next I got this long zip and pinned it onto the dress. My original plan had been to do hooks and eyes but honestly I am not convinced that's going to be okay for me to put on on my own so we're going to go with this instead. Okay so this is the base of the dress. We have pinned the zipper into the back. It's a little bit awkward to do up which is why you know my book dress I did put it on the side but honestly it's good enough. This one's definitely hopefully touch wood going to have a lot more flex than my other book dress did simply because we're not going to be literally paper macheing a solid thing. Also, are you getting like Wonder Woman Diana when she's on Themyscira? Is it Themyscira? I haven't actually watched Wonder Woman in ages when she's in her hometown kind of vibes because that is exactly what I'm getting. 
and that is a trial test. Okay, let's get stitching. Sewing the zip on didn't take too long, and once it was done, I trimmed off the excess fabric from around the zip and decided to just run a little fabric glue along those raw edges because this dress isn't going to last long enough to justify me spending hours hand stitching this. I then went over to the ironing board, made some bias binding that then got pinned onto the top of the corset to prevent the boning from coming out. This then also got stitched with zigzag to make it extra secure, and that meant we only had one thing left to do on the machine. Is this neat? No, absolutely not. But is it functional? Will it be covered? Yes, indeed it will. So that is fine. Now we have one thing left to do on the sewing machine. Why am I just bent double? This is such a silly idea. One second. Now we have one thing left to do on the sewing machine and that is to put the names of my Ko-Fi sponsors on this lovely dress, which will be seen on the underside. I think I'm going to make it visible on the underside of the skirt so I can flip it up and show you all in the final product. So with Ko-Fi, if you want to drop a donation to the channel, which the link is down below, I will embroider your name onto my next project I have actually been saving I think two months of people to put on this dress because I knew I was going to be doing it and thought people would like their names to be put on something really cool and awesome and a little bit unique. I also will pop your name on if you either get a paid or you donate during a free download of the patterns on my shop which guys check it out I've got some really cool ones definitely in my spider skirt that I posted last week the pattern for that is available now and it is really cool I think you should definitely make your own. And with that it is time to get to my sewing machine and see what I can do. So I set up the machine to stitch everyone's names, typing them in and deciding to embroider them either side of the zip. And now a big thank you to my Ko-Fi sponsors. You guys are amazing and your donations mean that I can keep using my days off to make all of these amazing projects and videos. Also, I'm really, really sorry, but last time I did these names, I missed you Moonlight Captain and I'm not quite sure how I did that, but hopefully you can please forgive me. And now for everyone else who has donated since, a massive thank you to Asymmetric, Ray Kitty, Melissa, Lot Draws, Finley, Susanna Kay, and Ladybug Dancer. I also love the messages you sent about how much you guys love my videos and thank you all so, so much. I honestly really appreciate it and it really, really does mean the world to me. Partway through stitching all your names, my machine actually got stuck, so I had to unstuck it, which actually meant that I had to cut a hole in my skirt, which, ugh, annoying, before starting again, and thankfully that did go smoothly. I've tried to do names in just about every font I have at this point on my sewing machine, and my main conclusion as to why it always seems to mess up and go wrong is that it can't just do a single straight line stitch, but has to go over everything at least twice, which I don't think it really likes. So Genome, if you're listening, please give me a font with just one stitch per area as it would make it way quicker and easier and honestly needed to do. And this is everyone's names on the dress. Now for some reason it's done Moonlight Captain twice, probably because the first time it didn't quite catch the last few letters and then it has done it again. I also have a hole where it decided to get stuck. Oops daisies, but we're just going to patch that up with some glue in a second. We then have everyone else's lovely names. It did get a bit dodgy at the end. I think this is the last time I'm actually going to use my machine to do this because it's not coming out as neat as I want. And honestly, this has taken over an hour to do and I don't think the results are worth it. So I'm just going to do it by hand next time. So if you guys would like your name sewn by hand on my next project, please do drop me a donation on Ko-Fi. I'm just going to stick a patch over this. I'm not going to bother sewing it because, you know, we're going to be sticking loads of glue and stuff on it anyway. So I'm going to do that, make myself some dinner, and then we will get sticking on the leaves at last. The hole was patched up with glue and left to dry on the radiator while I made myself some dinner. Then once I'd eaten, I pulled all the leaves out of the box and began to sort them into piles roughly done by size. And it was at this point that I'd realized I'd maybe did too many leaves considering how short the skirt for my dress is. Oops, and oh well, any extra can be donated to my favorite crafting charity shop for the kids to use in crafts, I am sure. So because there's been loads of things on the floor while I have been doing this project, Lily has taken to sleep in this little hole and it is really really cute also because I literally couldn't find her for ages and then I realized that she was in here and this is what's called camouflage isn't it darling boop so I stripped my mannequin in the most suggestive way possible and then realized I had set it too large so I adjusted it down until the dress fit. I then put a black bin bag on so that any glue that leaked through the dress wouldn't ruin my mannequin and zipped up the dress before getting out the glue gun. And yes, we are using a glue gun. Why? Because it is the only way this dress is getting made and honestly I have never used one before on this channel so I thought it would be fun to try a new tool. Oh boy did I burn my hands multiple times by doing this. I also found that so as not to waste glue that would not stop leaking out the gun, I had to work very, very fast and no, there is no kind of heat adjustment, I did check. However, soon enough, the first pile of large leaves was done, so I turned the gun off to assess my work. 
Okay, so my hands hurt a lot. I burnt myself several times doing that. And oh my God, the panic, the glue, Ooh. But I really love it so far. It looks amazing. Also, we've used up the whole first pile of leaves. So I'm hoping that I am gonna use up most of what I've done with, otherwise I kind of feel like I've wasted a bunch of my time, but oops a daisy. However, this is amazing, because obviously I know I have a lot of leaves putting them a bit closer together than I originally planned, but honestly it just means that none of the fabric whatsoever is showing through, and I actually really like that look. Also, this is gonna be so noisy to wear, it's actually going to be ridiculous. Thing is, I was just thinking of wearing this dress, you know, outside my house where I would normally wear all my outfits, However, I think this one might be a bit too nice and I need to see if somebody can maybe take some pictures of me somewhere very autumn looking. For now though, I'm gonna take two minutes just to let the burns on my hands cool down. I'm gonna sort out the next pile of leaves into kind of like big leaves in that pile and small leaves in that pile and gradually work big to small, just kind of spiraling around the skirt. We'll see how far we get. I'm really enjoying this. My only concern is that I don't have enough glue sticks. I'm hoping I do have enough glue sticks. I'm only through one glue stick and we've done all this, so hopefully I will have enough. If not, I'm gonna be going out to the shops first thing tomorrow, but I'd really rather not. Am I gonna be up all night doing this? Yes, probably. Am I gonna regret that? No, absolutely not. And we carried right on. Oh my gosh, it was just going so well. By this point, I was getting the hang of the hot glue gun and things were moving quickly. So quickly that I actually burnt my finger bad enough to get a blister right on my writing finger too, where I rest my pen, so hopefully I won't need to hand write anything in the next few days. Okay, so this is the skirt so far. We have finished with the second row of leaves, and I think this looks fantastic! Oh my god, she's really coming together. I love the fact that now I've got leaves on, it's going to be a bit stiffer. I was a bit worried because I don't really have any petticoats that I can put under here. I have got those on my list to make, but it's just not at the moment. So yes, this is going well. I am just going to take a little break before we sort through the next pile of leaves. Again, I'm going to try and organise them by size. However, with this as well, I also want to try and pick out a few more colours. There's a lot of just plain kind of orangey brown at the back. I mean, it's a little bit darker on that side, particularly on this side. I think this side's where I normally start. It's It just looks a bit plain. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to try and pick out anything that's particularly bright, particularly dark, particularly light, particularly green. I think this is one of my favourite leaves. I'm just gonna this one right here because you've got the light and then the dark and it's just pretty and all of these just look amazing it is very nerve-wracking i'm going to say that right now the top is going to be the biggest challenge because we can't just do a single line of glue around the top of the leaf we are going to have to go all the way around and stick 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 and i am genuinely quite scared that this is going to disintegrate after i've worn it for the first time and obviously we don't want that to happen Ooh, <laughs> this is exciting i love this as well like i've got to be honest was not feeling this project this morning when i started it i've spent several hours on it now it is currently nearly two o'clock in the morning and i'm not going to be going to bed until this is done and there will be no regrets about that whatsoever the other thing i've done is been a bit picky in any leaves i don't like like this one where a lot of it's torn off or well, same with this one, it's just torn, doesn't look very nice. I have been putting to one side and we're just not using those because I have so many that I can actually choose to do that, which I'm very pleased about. How do you know it's late? Because even the kitten is asleep. Carrying on, we loaded up another glue stick and sorted some leaves to get the skirt finished. I'd honestly been feeling really demotivated with this project up until this point, but as it began to come together, my excitement peaked and then at last the skirt was done. So we moved on to doing the lines along the zip and the front of the bodice using all the extra small leaves. I purposely tried to get the darker and odd shaped ones to make some visual difference there, and I think that did actually work reasonably well. Okay, so she has slipped down the dress form, but the front of the bodice is now done, and oh my god, I love it. I used one of my favourite leaves for the centrepiece, it's just peeking up above the top line just to give it that nice shape. The rest of it I've used extra tiny leaves that are not these big ones. The only downside is with the hot glue, it's actually kind of melted some of the PVA sealing, which does give it a little bit more of a messy look than I would ideally like. It doesn't chop so much on the darker leaves, but certainly with this one you can see that it's just kind of peeled a little bit. At the end of the day, I'm not too fast. I think it looks really, really good. I am going to try and shimmy it back up the dress form before we do the sides. And I also did do the zip earlier so that that is just all sorted. I did get a little bit of glue on the zip, but I've just to make sure that it still opens and closes and it seems okay along the top is going to be interesting. I think this might just be amazing. One downside though is that we only have one, 
two, three, four large glue sticks left. We do have this little pack of mini glue sticks, but I'm not sure if these are actually going to work in the glue gun. Might try and use them up before I use the last big glue stick, just in case I need to use the big glue stick to, you know, shove it all down. Ooh, hopefully we have enough. So we got the tiny leaves and went around the top of the bodice to cover the edge, then began to work our way down. For the bodice, I made the leaves face up rather than down to again give some visual difference to the top and bottom of the dress. Working around, we gradually worked our way down to the waistline, where it was finally complete. So it is 5 a.m. and we're done! Oh my god, does she not look amazing? I have so many blisters on my hand. The worst two are on this finger here, which is my writing finger, and I am not impressed. Hot glue is painful, guys, but hello, it is worth it. This thing looks amazing. I want to take it to the forest to have a photo shoot in, but the thing is, I don't think it's going to survive me putting a seatbelt on, and I also don't think it survived me sitting down. It is quite delicate. However, it's fine. It looks amazing, and to be fair, would I make a dress like this again? Yes. Yes, I think I would. For now, though, I am going to leave it as it is. I'm just going to shuffle it up on the mannequin again. I think I put the mannequin a tad too small, to be honest, and I am going to go to bed. This looks amazing, guys. <laughs> just everything I want in a dress. Okay, I'm rambling. It's five in the morning. Clearly I am sleep deprived. I'm just going to call Ben so I can show him this amazing creation and then I'm going to bed and I will see you in the grand reveal now. Okay, so this dress, it is utterly amazing. I think we can all agree on that. It came out way better than what I was expecting, which I feel like I say this every week, but genuinely I kind of thought it was going to fall apart the first time I wore it. This is it after it has been worn, and though I think we did lose a few leaves, a couple of these bits particularly that pop up over the top have been crinkled. Overall though, I think that, you know, it was a success. <laughs> and certainly the skirt flows really nicely, it looks really good. I did manage to convince one of my friends to come and help me take some photos because I'm actually going to be entering this into a competition. And a really funny thing happened, so literally just before the photo shoot, I was round hers to take the pictures because she has some like nice autumn trees in her garden area and to come down the stairs she has lots of dogs she has a gate at the bottom of the stairs as i stepped over it my zipper came nearly completely undone along the back learned my lesson should have put a hook and eye in there and then she was like oh it's fine i'll do it up for you and it immediately broke so she actually stitched me into this dress for the photo shoot which amy if you're watching this thank you very much i am forever grateful <laughs> however this has to be one of my favorite dresses that i think i've ever made so we'll start with things i don't like about it which is that particularly on the bodice you don't really notice it with the skirt but on the bodice where we've used the hot glue it has melted some of the pva sealant that we used on the leaves now this is just one of those things and i don't really know what i could have done to prevent it certainly i wasn't aware that this was going to happen thus we had this problem however i don't feel it's overly noticeable there's only a few little areas and if anything i think the leaves just look a little bit more mottled than the ones on the skirt certainly if i'd gone in with a game plan originally that i was going to have leaves sticking up the top anything that i was going to have sticking up the top i probably would have done multiple layers of pva rather than just the one just to make them a little bit more stronger the hot glue I think was a really good choice despite the fact I've really burnt my hands because even had we hand stitched all these leaves on I don't think we could have got this layered beautiful effect that we ended up with. Having a zip in the back not my best idea let's face it however the hook and eyes that I was originally going to use I still stand by the fact I don't think they would have really worked I could probably add a hook and eyes in now just underneath the zipper that exists and it would be fine really tempted to do that but I don't actually have anywhere to wear this dress so for now we've just pinned the back shut and we're gonna leave it there now my favorite part of this dress by far does have to be the skirt it layers it flows and now that I've actually worn it I feel very safe so that I can demonstrate this the entire time we were walking around taking photos, that is the noise that I had to deal with. And my friend actually has a couple of horses. We decided to see what they thought of the dress. They were not impressed by the noise, though a few of them did get a little bit brave. Certainly, I think one problem that I'm having with a lot of these projects where I make a dress out of odd things is that my chest always ends up being very flat because despite it being a curved shape, it just doesn't really work out. Once you put loads of glue there, it doesn't want to curve. So I think that's something I need to improve for, for the future. And certainly my project next month, which is going to be a dress made out of newspaper, is hopefully going to do with that in a suitable way we will see if this actually works because you know i have actually half made it already and i'm now looking at this and wondering if i've actually already made the same mistakes if not it's fine we will improve it in the future <laughs> did this dress get me in the mood for the autumn season 110 percent it absolutely did i love it <laughs> i absolutely do again i think this is honestly one of the best and my favorite things i've made i actually really want to see if i can get a bunch of different size fabric leaves so that we can recreate this kind of look 
or if I can maybe just hand embroider thread paint my own. So I actually thread painted a bunch of leaves for a poison ivy belt. That alone took me about two weeks. And this is about a hundred times more leaves, which would be a lot more hard work, let alone the amount of different thread that I would need to create a project this big. So you know what? When we reach 10,000 subscribers, I will be kicking myself in the future, I'm sure. I will thread paint an entire leaf dress like this and I will find a very fancy autumn themed party that I can wear it to. The other thing is I really wish that I owned a pair of wings because oh my gosh did I look like a forest fairy and we actually watched Hocus Pocus like after we did the pictures and several of the pictures it looks like I'm casting magic on the leaves and that is just so so cool. Having a circle skirt or technically what is just under a circle skirt was also a great decision. It does help all the leaves lay flat and gives them that room to expand and also having the big leaves at the bottom and then getting smaller up the top I think was also the right decision. Had I mixed it up a little bit more with the sizes I don't think it would have flowed as nicely. With the bodice section where we have all of these small leaves I mean it's good. I think if I were to make this again I would specifically do the center front bit which I wanted to stand out. I would hunt for very dark leaves maybe from a specific kind of tree that gives like a bit of a purpley color rather than this dark orange. I might have gone for like actual green leaves there maybe. Certainly one thing that I would have loved to have done is a lot of the leaves were kind of a mixture of yellow and green and had we had enough of those doing a transition from green to like yellow and green to the orange and the yellows I think would have looked really really cool but it was just a case that we didn't really have the leaves to do that which is a shame. Also if you wanted to make this dress yourself the pattern for it is available on my Ko-Fi shop the link is down below if you would like to support my channel and help me in these creative endeavours because they do get a little bit expensive sometimes please do drop us a donation if you can otherwise just check out all the free sewing patterns that I have there are a few paid ones on there but most of them these days they are free so please download we are going into Halloween after all and you may need some costuming supplies and that is it for today guys if you enjoyed this video please make sure you leave a like down below it really helps out the channel as does comments and every single comment I always reply to so if you want to talk to me yay we can do that and if you want to talk to me even more we actually have this awesome discord I am always asking people for their opinions on colors that I should make my projects in or buttons or even what projects I should make next not to mention we've got a really good little community who if you want to chat vintage sewing machines or sewing advice we are more than happy to help out so please have a look at that if you want to join otherwise please make sure Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I have two more Halloween videos coming out, both of which are going to be cosplays, so yay! I post every single Wednesday, guys, with cosplay, vintage sewing, and vintage sewing machine content, or sometimes just making things out of crazy stuff because honestly, I've just kind of been enjoying that lately. So until next Wednesday, guys, I will see you then. I hope you have a very spooky season and a very beautiful day. Bye!